all right we are live and good evening everyone it's 9 pm i'm live and welcome to the first episode of ama with dnk uh, all those who are watching thank you so much for tuning in uh, let me quickly check whether am i clearly uh, audible and i am live on both facebook and youtube although this will be very soon be only a youtube exclusive program so thank you so much for for tuning in uh i you need to give me like quick 10 seconds uh before i give you more information on what this program is all about what do i intend to do uh what is the format and things like that so and all those who have already joined thank you so much for tuning in perfect i think we are live both on youtube and facebook especially youtube fantastic all those who are watching me on facebook i would really appreciate if you can also uh, go and subscribe the youtube channel because the I, entire idea is to as i said make it only youtube exclusive program and very soon uh, it will be only be on youtube i have a couple of people joining in uh, so thank you so much for joining and most importantly this will be happening every saturday so every saturday 9 pm sharp uh, i will try to come online uh, talk to all of you and it will not just be uh, a random live we will make sure that we are making it more like a structured program and we are able to deliver you enough value so what is the format we'll talk about that uh, in like a minute so let's get started so once again let me formally begin thank you so much everyone for tuning in this is ama with dnk episode number 1 and today we are going to talk about startup basics and how to get started that is what we are going to talk about today uh for all those who don't know who i am right and why this program is called ama with dnk so ama means ask me anything and uh, why dnk because my name is dil nawaz khan uh for all those who don't know who i am i am an entrepreneur i have almost roughly 12 years of of experience i run two companies so allow me a minute to give you a quick brief quick intro about me for all those who do not know uh this is happening only in the first episode because of those who don't know who i am right but but, but i'm assuming all those who are watching are somehow connected and they would know uh, who i am right so I'm an as I said I'm an entrepreneur I have almost like a decade long experience across design technology uh, and startup incubation sp space the reason behind starting this entire program was uh, for uh, my passion my zeal towards contributing and working in the startup ecosystem uh, which I'm really really passionate about uh, I run two companies as I said one of the companies is called Codevan Labs Codevan Labs is a design ops management platform we will work with startups uh, enterprises uh, okay so this might sound little distracting let me quickly also remove the banners so things become little less distracting for you guys okay i hope this works okay so i run two companies one of them is called codesign labs so codesign labs is a design ops management platform where we work with startups entrepreneurs enterprises uh, and small and big companies where we you give them our uh, services using our project management platform which is called codesign labs and most importantly uh we deliver these services using high quality curated freelancers uh i run another company which i'm really really excited and passionate about which is called power deck so it's a pitch deck design company uh where we help startups in making pitch decks and most importantly help them become more fundable so these are the two things what i do uh I have previously worked with Startup Oasis, which is a Jaipur-based technology business incubator. Uh, it was it's a joint venture of Rico and CIA Time and the Bad. And I also had worked with United Seed Fund, uh, which which were which is now called United Ventures. It's an impact investment fund based out of Bangalore. Okay, so most important question, or rather the first question of AMA with DNK, right? Why AMA with DNK, right? Why am even why i am even trying to even build this or create a series out of it and uh, you know so all those who, who all those who know me who have been following me following my work or are connected with me on social media and you know of course that i'm i'm really very very active on all, all, almost on all sort of social media platforms all those who know me uh, you 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 must have seen me 
going on Instagram lives and Facebook lives and you know other and maybe this is the YouTube live for the first time but yes Instagram lives and Facebook lives have been pretty common and you have seen me going on a lot of kind of different AMS right uh, and of course I keep on getting a lot of various inquiries from people mostly young entrepreneurs uh, who want to either uh, take my advice on mentoring or on their business especially around marketing design branding technology product those areas and I thought, and I was thinking from quite a long time that why not uh, we create a dedicated structured program where we utilize our Saturday night, right? So why not we jump online, sit together, uh, have a maybe cup of coffee and talk uh, most importantly on the startup aspects, startup fundamentals, and why, why don't I answer a couple of questions from you guys, right? So that's what we're going to do tonight. I'm going to pick up a few questions and I'll be answering them as I said, but it's, it's in a more structured format. So uh, the, the overall structure of the entire show will be, it will roughly be like a 40, 45 minute to an hour show. That's will, that will be the duration. Uh, if you, if you who are watching this have any question, you can simply post your question into the comment section. If you're watching it in Facebook, post it in the Facebook section in the comment. I'll pick those questions later on. Uh, I will be picking up the YouTube questions first. So if you're watching it on YouTube, post, post put your questions in the comment section or in the live chat. I'll pick up those questions. I'll try and answer them. Uh, but the most exciting part is it will not be a random AMA. Every time we will do an AMA, I will pick up a topic. And for this time, it is startups basic and how can you get started? So for today, we're going to rough, we're going to principally talk about the very basic fundamentals. I'm going to answer the questions around very basic principles and fundamentals around startups. And how can you, if you're watching this, how can you get started? So that's going to be the format. I have a, I have already received a few questions. My team has filtered out those questions, uh, uh, especially around the topic. And of course, then I'll, if, if, if the time allows, time permits, uh, I will also be trying and answering some random questions, but we'll, we'll keep them at the end so that the flow of the program uh, does not change, right? So that's the broader flow. Okay. So the question number one, I want to pick up uh, right now, which is the very basic first question, which almost everybody asks in the startup ecosystem. And the question is, what is a startup? I think there's a huge debate about this particular question that what is a startup and most of people also get con gets confused between what is a business and what is a startup is every business a startup is uh, every startup a startup or uh, you know is every new business every new venture anything which is done new for the first time is it a startup so we will pick up this first very basic question today and I will be talking about what is a startup so and let and and also as i said i will also be trying to clarify a couple of uh, pointers from the theory point of view so that you know when i'm able to give you these answers they're very very clear right so as per the wikipedia let's pick up the universal definition as per the wikipedia a startup or a startup company uh, uh, is a project initiated by an entrepreneur to seek effective development and validate a scalable business model so it might sound or look a little jargony to you but the very basic fundamental or couple of key points keywords that you need to understand and hear here is that uh, it's an entrepreneurial venture started by a founder or an entrepreneur uh, towards building a scalable business model so now we all need to understand what is scalability or what is scalable and what is a business model i'll also try and address those pointers in today's uh, ama right uh, there's another very interesting definition by a gentleman called steve blank he's a silicon valley based entrepreneur and the definition by steve blank is that we can define a startup as a temporary organization designed to search for a repeatable and scalable business model so again the word business model has come for the second time here right so what is a business model so business model is basically a model which describes how your company creates delivers and captures the value for the potential client the prospect you have right so the broader point is that any startup is it's a new entrepreneurial venture uh built by an entrepreneur built by a startup founder uh typically uh, uh, in typically ha needs to have a business model which is scalable and repeatable and really can grow really really further right now 
if you're watching this in india and of course most of the people who are watching would be from india uh, in our in our country we have a dedicated program called as startup india invest india or maybe uh, something called as startup india there's a dedicated website uh, which was launched couple of uh, years back uh, and that particular website is operated under dpiit which is department of promotion and industries and internal trade and uh this particular department falls under ministry of commerce and industries so this website this particular department government of india defines startup in also a very specific manner and a very specific order right so if you are an indian entrepreneur if you're watching this from india you also need to understand what the definition of an indian government is for a startup and why we want to understand that because a lot of things are going to do as an indian entrepreneur uh, will basically be defined by the policies and the guidelines and uh, also by the definitions government has set for you right so let us look at what the definition from the government of india side is so and and, and of course the government definition is very transparent very black and white very transactional rather so the first point that the government's definition is it says that you have to be a incorporated company uh, less than 10 years old and of course your the entire uh, financial transaction the entire revenue the entire revenue of this entity should be less than 10000 crore rupees right and of course you have to be a very highly innovative uh, company right you have to be you have to be you, you you must be dealing in a very highly innovative model right so let's take a pause and quickly combine all these three definitions together let us look at what silicon valley entrepreneurs say let us look at what government media says let us look at what uh, uh, you know wikipedia says so combining all of them together we reach out to a uh, a common basic minimum key pointers that you want to talk about so uh, the the it has to be a scalable business model it has to be a repeatable business model the startup needs to create a lot of value you have to as per the government of the definition you have to have less than 10 years of existence and 100 crores of revenue and then of course it's a temporary organization which is looking for a business model right so these kind of things so combining all of these definitions together here are five core pointers that i want to tell you which actually means and will actually tell you what is a startup so this is the answer to my question number one which a lot of people ask what is a startup so startup number one is a highly innovative product or a services company it's a new entrepreneurial venture it's an entity which is building a highly innovative product or a highly innovative service number one number two it should be solving a big and a real problem right so if you are a startup founder you should be solving a problem right and of course when i say the word problem may not mean uh, like a problem problem you can al also be solving a luxury good goods problem or maybe like a lifestyle problem that's a different topic different debate different subject for another day but you should be as a startup should be solving a real and a big problem right your entire model in general should be highly scalable right so if your no your model is not scalable you are into a model which is around brick and mortar so if you look at any kind of a startup in the country or maybe internationally if you look at like a company like a google which almost has is a highly scalable company has 96 percent of the entire market share if you look at facebook extremely scalable if you look at paytm if you look at oyo if you look at ola uber for that matter right they're extremely scalable company right so scalability comes as a very critical factor and last but not the least what makes you scalable the technology backing so if you are a brick and mortar company with zero technology backing or with no technology interface technically you're not a startup you're then just a business or you're just another venture which is done for some sort of a trading or transaction or things like that but technology is basically a very critical and a core component of what makes you a startup right so quickly summarizing these five points you have to be very very innovative uh, you have to be solving a real and a big problem you have to have a very highly scalable model and last but not the least you need to have a technology based or a technology backing in your entire system right all of these combined things combined together makes you startup so if any of you who are watching this if you find somebody uh, 
having this doubt or uh, unable to understand the difference between a conventional traditional business or a startup or if you think that every uh, every other venture which is done out there like a new shop or like a new uh, you know interior design store or a new store or new sari store or maybe rather than a new e-commerce company and if the the innovation technology scalability factor is not there you technically do not qualify qualify the startup you can be calling yourself yourself whatever you want but technically you do not qualify the startup right so that's the question number 1 which you need to understand what is a startup right so when you are thinking all those who are watching which when you are thinking as a first time entrepreneur as a student entrepreneur or as an aspiring entrepreneur be thinking and contemplating on any idea any problem please make sure that all of these factors are factored in into your entire model that you are trying to build if any of the any, any of these pointers are not inbuilt in your model i think uh, you're not technically a startup then and uh, if you're not a startup startups get funding so you do not become a fundable business when i say a fundable business uh, technically uh, an angel investor or a equity investor or a high risk capital investor might not come and give you give the money to you you or you can of course go and raise a small amount of loan or a, or you can raise debt fund you can raise working capital you can get money from uh, other general investors but you do not become a vc backed or a angel investment backed company right so this is this is the, these these are the reasons that you need to understand this point why i'm saying all this is also that a lot of times people come and ask me that hey uh, and and in general we have we have seen this question here as well and I'll, and i'll talk about pitching part as well today i'll i'll briefly briefly touch upon that because somebody asked the question on pitching as well that what are the factors investors look for or investors see i think these are a few factors that investors look or investors see that are you actually an innovative company solving a real problem are you innovative are you scalable do you have a technology uh layer in your entire stack of what you're developing right so this is part number one right of course another pointer that came multiple times in this entire conversation which leads to me uh, which takes to me to the second question what is innovation so i will rather not be answering this question there are multiple types of innovation they can be frugal innovation grassroots innovation they can be high tech innovation so so right from uh something which is done in a village which is like frugal innovation we have a lot of organizations in our country supporting frugal innovation grassroots innovation to something like a rocket ship which is built by spacex i think there is this infinite definition or there is lot of definitions around innovation but today we will not get into that innovation q and a right so i will rather have an, another episode on uh, where we dedicate to talk and take questions around innovation and most importantly where we we will also have another uh another uh, ama session where we talk about the business models and various kind of kind of business models right so another question that has come to me which is the question number 2 which is again a very exciting question is a lot of people come and ask that what is the right time to do a startup right a lot of people come and ask that that should you be doing a startup just after college should you be uh, getting into a job and then do a startup should you uh make some money and then 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 do a startup uh, how wise it is to build a startup back in college uh I, or, or so basically what is the right time to build a startup right so if i have to answer this question in one line a right right time to build a startup is when when you have really identified and understood a problem or identified and understood a gap area or a space where you think you are confident enough to go out and build a venture right and then of course you have some sort of a basic financial security you have some sort of a money to sustain yourself and your organization uh, and you have some sort of a maybe a consultancy or some sort of another form of income flowing in because money is going to at least you need certain some sort of money to help you sustain the basic lifestyle that you currently have uh, now i will divide this entire question it's a very as i said it's a very interesting question uh, i will divide this entire question into two parts part number 1 i will be talking about college guys right so most of my followers most of the people who follow me or or, or watch my content are uh, either young entrepreneurs college going students student entrepreneurs or early stage guys who may be just passed out of college and trying to build a company right and then of course a few of them are mature entrepreneurs with roughly 10 to 12 15 years of experience and now uh, are in a sta- stage where they're little stable in terms of financial security and are building a company so i will try and answer both of these parts in two ways right so first i will pick up 
the question which i also fundamentally believe is very important that why college is a great time to build a company or why if you're a student entrepreneur if you're a student why you why college uh, is the best time to build a startup or think of building a startup because uh, these days i have seen i have observed and it's pretty evident uh, the government the college in fact the entire nation the entire ecosystem is building supporting uh, nurturing student entrepreneurs like anything they're supporting uh, companies run by student entrepreneurs and i've seen so many of them out there so let's first understand why of the entire narrative and then we can talk about how right so why i think or what are the key pointers that why i think college is the best time uh, or while you're studying is the best time to build a startup so why college is the best time to build a startup another question okay let's get started with that so number one point that i want to talk about is while back in college your entire overall liability is almost negligible right you're not paying any rents you don't have to pay any money to anybody you most of the students who live live really very frugally you either live with your friends or live in a hostel the hostel fees have already been paid the food money for food has already been paid i will not go into the debate of uh, the quality of food of course but most of the times you know, you know, the food is being taken care of the rental is being taken care of the electricity bills all your other bills are being taken care of of, of your of, by your family and most importantly we have enough time in our life to uh, think uh, of doing a lot of other things right so i believe personally believe and i have been a student entrepreneur as well and i support some of the student entrepreneurs out there i think the earlier you start the more you are able to learn because startup is a basically startup is a journey of making endless mistakes right uh, the earlier you are able to do all those mistakes and learn out of that the earlier you will be able to understand how the things work and the earlier you will be able to make those corrections because as i said startup is uh, an infinite iteration process you're not building a business which has a very robust business model or which is done which which has been done by somebody out there and you you can just follow the footsteps it's a it's a journey into the unknown you don't know what you get what you what you're getting into what you're venturing into right so the earlier you start the more grip you can get in terms of what you're doing or what you're building right so the point number one is start early fail fast right if you are a student entrepreneur if when you start back in your college the earlier you start the earlier you can make all those mistakes that uh, your peers might be doing later on or 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 an entrepreneur might be doing 10 years 20 years down the line and therefore you learn to understand and learn from those mistakes so start early fail fast second most important i think india as a country has a thriving entrepreneurial ecosystem which i always said is now being supported by a lot of not just private organizations but government organizations industry bodies rather colleges as well to my surprise now i i see colleges having a full fledged dedicated business incubators can you beat that i think nothing better can happen than this right so uh, i think the the kind of infra the college can give you the kind of basic support college can give you and most import, important importantly the general support the money the seed capital the schemes government has you can get the money out of uh, i think there's enough benefits available from government organizations private organizations colleges that you can avail and uh, uh, which can which can basically mitigate all your risk so i've seen smart guys uh, you know running the company back in college applying to so many competitions out there which are exclusive just for students and by the day, the time they're passing out they are able to make good or they are able to collect good amount of 10 20 30 lakh rupees uh, as seed capital for doing this startup venture full time so i think there's a lot of support available and as i said also most importantly there's a thriving ecosystem in colleges now in fact government has a lot of schemes i was a part of one of the panels yesterday around on this thing called tai 2.0 which is run by niti uh, which is ministry of information and electronics uh, uh, technology uh, and i think they have a dedicated program for supporting student entrepreneurs and especially giving seed money to students or or maybe entrepreneurs at an idea stage so imagine there's a program by the government where you can make money or get money from the government just to validate your idea and there's so many projects uh, or so many schemes from the government side out there and so there's so many competition schemes and uh, projects like that for students so there's enough 
resources available if you are a serious entrepreneur if, if able to at least do the basic ground work right uh, another point is that uh, when you back in college not just uh, resources are available not just things are available but also you have enough access to people right so imagine if you are in a university you have access to a computer engineer you have access to a mechanical engineer you have access to a, a, a designer you have access to a uh, a content guy advertising guy marketing guy maybe an mba or if you're trying to build a cross functional team and trying to venture into something which is hardcore like a agri tech or a health tech or things like that i think you have access to those kind of guys and most importantly that you have profs go and eat their brain out right so i think uh, from right, right from the support through the college to the support from the profs and the mentors to the kind of network the college can give you uh, to the uh, access to cross functional team members and uh, gripping the people right at a very early stage i think there's enough uh, access to enough people available right back in college so i think you should definitely uh, think about this point keep this point in mind and uh, access to team members is very easy i meet so many folks who reach out to me in order to ask me this question which is uh, and and what what a place to ask this question we are doing in ama right how to find a co-founder it's a very very critical question and a question by almost every entrepreneur when it comes to building a startup how do i how do i find a co-founder how do i find a, a right co-founder i'm a single entrepreneur will i get funding things like that so of course we will as i said we'll do another dedicated post episode on co-founders and questions around that uh, i'll pick those questions then but i think as i said access to team members and co-founders is, is is again very important very critical which you can find in in college and you can experiment with co-founders because a lot of co-founders also split up later on right so you can always experiment and figure figure out who the right founder or the co-founder the team member is and it's it's a, it's a great way to build the core first level team uh, then then as i said another point is Uh, immense learning opportunities right so when you are a student entrepreneur or you are starting back in college uh, whether it is access to opportunities access to network networking opportunities imagine you are a student entrepreneur right with a with a real company right or a student innovator with a real company right imagine the kind of uh, uh, kind of events you can get access to i think that's incredible that's mind blowing uh, i think i should be envy i should be jealous of student entrepreneurs here because uh, they get get huge discounts and as a student you can just enter into any other, any place or any other place right so i think that's uh, another advantage of starting a, 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 a company back in college last but not the least which i personally think is one of the craziest point or the craziest uh, thing around being a student entrepreneur is that if you run a company back in college and if you uh, are a student entrepreneur and if your business fails companies in general prefer to hire failed entrepreneurs i hope this should blow your mind right so uh, if you are a student entrepreneur i'll repeat this if your company fails why so because if your company fails the kind of skill sets you would have learned right the kind of uh, experience the kind of interpersonal skills you would have you would have gathered through the entire company building process while this while this journey of building a startup while you you know build uh, learn those skill set right imagine the kind of edge you will have over your peers so imagine going to an hr and telling him or her that hey i used to run a company and have got the skills into negotiation i know how to make sales i know how to make presentations i know how to make how to how to talk to people i know most importantly i know how to make a business model i know how to make a financial model i know how to make a pitch deck or i know how to how how to go and pitch to the people out there right see let's take a pause here and analyze what just happened the conventional education or the degree normal general education do not prepare you for real world skills of course the kind of learning you get back in college i'm not getting getting into that debate that whether the conventional education system is good or bad that's a, again i said different debate altogether but when you when you when you are uh, uh, are building the company back in college 
right? The kind of skills you're going to learn through this entire journey will definitely give an edge because the kind of learnings you're going to get through the journey. And as an entrepreneur, of course, as I said, it's a it's a it's a it's a, uh, it's a uh, start early, fail fast journey. You will keep on making mistakes. You learning. You keep you keep on learning new things, and of course, you will have edge over your peers. And then, not just uh, and and another exciting thing. Let me tell you that not and I've I've seen a few times not just that you can. uh get better hired you can get uh, hired at a better pay package as well and who's stopping you from rather getting hired into the your own client's company i've also seen that happening so i think uh, i think i should not give you enough reasons of why you should not be thinking of building a company as an entrepreneur as a student entrepreneur or why you should not be thinking of building a company back in college i think it's a fantastic time fantastic platform uh money is there resources are there support is available incubators are thriving in the country right now the kind of schemes the government has put in the kind of schemes private organization have put in i think there is enough enough support out there for building a company as a student entrepreneur now let me come on to the question where i want to talk about uh how can you think of building a company or how can you get started as not a student entrepreneur or how or what or what or what things you need to take care of while building a company as not a student entrepreneur but as a full time entrepreneur once you're out of the of the campus or maybe you are in a job right see number one and the most important and critical thing that all of the entrepreneurs especially uh, the non student entrepreneurs the full time entrepreneur need to need to understand is that you need to have some money in your pocket right because see when you're building a company when you're building a startup it's like a journey it's like venturing into an unknown and when you're venturing into an unknown you neither have a, a fixed business model you neither have sometimes you don't even have a revenue coming in i'm not saying you don't have a revenue model but my your revenues might be delayed uh, raising money is really tough i'm not saying people are not able to raise money fundings happen but it's tough Uh, uh and again this as i said this is not a q and a on raising money so we'll have another q and a another ama on raising money pitching pitch deck investment funding we'll have another that that's for another day but raising money is tough and you will not get money on day one now you need to have some sort of a very basic financial security very basic money in your bank account or you need to have some sort of stream of income getting into your pocket so that you are able to sustain yourself i think that is the most important and critical part so if you're thinking of building a company once you're either into a full time job you want to transit transit to become a full time entrepreneur i think either you should be picking up on couple of freelancing gigs or you should have be have, having some sort of a consultancy money or some sort of a parallel stream of income coming into you or you should have enough savings right of course as i said we did a dedicated episode on personal finance and entrepreneur because i've again seen that lot of entrepreneurs when they're building a company they do not take care of the personal finance but see there's a very famous quote that in the beginning days on the initial days of a startup an entrepreneur is the company if you die the company dies and when i say die not literally die if you are not able to survive you're not able to sustain yourself you can't build a company frustrated right of course entrepreneurial entrepreneurial journey the journey of an of of building a startup is frustrating it's a journey of a loner it's frustrating there will be hundreds of uh, challenges you will be facing a lot of unknown but the most important critical thing that you need to understand is you cannot uh, give yourself extra pain uh, which is unaccounted for right which you haven't thought of so make sure the basic finances are in place right it might sound weird to a lot of people but either uh, if you do not have basic money in your pocket to sustain your lifestyle that's the thumb rule do not get into a startup uh, at least save for a couple of years and at least ha- at least have money the thumb rule is at least have money for 6 uh, months to an year to sustain yourself that will allow you to carry on with the existing lifestyle or if you can cut down on your or your existing lifestyle bring it down down to the minimal but do not live in a way you do not like you need to have that peace of mind that basic security financially while you're building a company so uh, of course and and we can have another ama around personal finance uh, while uh, building a company uh, for an entrepreneur so i hope i was able to basically give you all the idea give you give you all the answers around these two pointers 
why college is the best time to build a company and uh, what are the kind of things you need to take care of if you are a full time entrepreneur uh, now let me also answer another question which i received on instagram so i don't know how many of you uh, uh, are watching this follow me on instagram i'll quickly run the ticker for all, all of you guys if, if you if you are watching this for this for the first time go and follow me on instagram uh, uh, and 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 i have received a few questions from the instagram uh, i will try and answer a few few of them as well and this is basically an extract what i'm going to talk about now is basically an extract out of that particular question which I, which was posted on instagram so the question was uh, is it compulsory to register a startup before pitching right now it's a very broad question right so when i say compulsory to register a startup before pitching uh, let me again break it into two parts one i want to talk about stages of a startup first before even talking about is it compulsory or not to register a startup before pitching because if i'm not able to tell you the stages of a startup this answer would become complicated because both yes and no are true for this question at the same time and why so let me give you the analysis uh, around this particular question and then uh, we can try and dissect this question further in detail so if you are thinking of as i said now when we have spoken about student entrepreneurship what is a startup uh, what is a business what is the difference between both of them let us talk about the stages of a startup and because as i said how to build a startup is also a part of this entire ama uh, let us pick up this particular point which is how, stages of a startup all these stages that i'm going to talk about are non theoretical not picked up from the internet these are generally pure experiential stages that i'm going to talk about so of course there would be enough theoretical data out there in terms of stages of a startup but the the, the the stages of the format i'm going to talk about is in general going to be about uh, my understanding my experience and what is more practical in terms of implementation in terms of understanding the stages of a startup right so typically there are roughly six stages you would be in while building your company or building a startup let me remove this once again for avoiding this distraction for people okay so number one stage is either an idea stage or a pre idea stage or an ideation stage i i am combining all of them three together right so idea pre idea ideation this is a time where you're thinking about your idea where you're ideating you're going to going and talking to multiple people you are uh you know you are just thinking on what idea to pick and choose so i meet so many entrepreneurs who come to me with let us say five ideas that hey i have got five ideas can you help me choose one or hey can you tell me an idea or what sector to venture into of course that's again a deb deb different debate but and and uh, there's another question attached to it how do you narrow down on your idea i'll answer that later on but that's the first stage number one you either have an idea You or you are discussing that idea with a couple of people, or you are into a pre-idea stage. You are thinking of becoming an entrepreneur. You are excited about the entrepreneurial journey. You want to jump into uh, the the entrepreneur shoes. You want to build a company, but you don't know what to begin with, right? And of course, then you you are also then evaluating a lot of problems. You are look, looking at all those areas. That's the stage number one. You are confused. You don't you don't have clarity, right? Stage number two is where you get into validation. So now maybe you have validated or narrowed down. Sorry, sorry. So now you have narrowed down onto one stage. You have uh, narrowed down onto the one problem, or you have narrowed down onto the one sector. Out of the five sectors you are talking and thinking about, or, or or out of five potential business models or potential solutions, you have now narrowed down onto one particular problem, one particular solution, or one particular type of a company you want to build. Right. So that's a validation stage. This is where you go out and talk to customers. This is where you go out and talk to potential. Sorry, this is where this is where you go out and talk to potential customers. This is where you go and talk to stakeholders, right? And I would rather host a different session on design thinking, idea validation, validation frameworks, uh, 
uh, how to identify stakeholders. That's a different learning altogether. We'll talk about that as well. There's so much to learn in, in a startup domain that if you're an entrepreneur, it's an endless learning journey. I'm telling you, it is so exciting, so exciting that I can't even tell you and how excited I am while I'm doing all these sessions and while, while I'm learning and reading myself. Um, it's been 10 years and the, 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 the learning is endless, right? So that's another excitement. That's another advantage of being an entrepreneur. The, 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 the learning, the journey is endless, right? So second is validation stage. You go and talk to stakeholders. You go and talk to people. You go and talk to potential customers. Try and find out and figure out whether they like the product, what you're pitching, whether they like the idea, whether they like the concept, whether it makes sense to them or not, or they're thinking of something hypothetical, which is not doable, right? Third is where you have got some sort of a positive feedback from the people, from the stakeholder, from the potential customers, from the clients. And now you get on to building the product. Or rather, let me use the correct word. You get onto building an MVP, which is minimum viable product. You start building something which offers you, which uh, which uh, which which delivers the very basic requirement, which fulfills the very basic requirement of the client of the customer. And you are, you you build this in a very lean fashion, very lean model, very early, quick quick way uh, as a rapid prototype, as like a quick MVP, so that you can go and further validate or see whether what you're saying works or not, right? So that's the third stage, which is prototyping or product development stage, where you're, where, you're, where you're primary building an MVP. Then comes the revenue stage, or maybe go to market stage. Now you have built an MVP. Now you have a product. Now your product, you have you have something which at least roughly validates uh, your idea further than just the thought. And you go out there, pitch your product to, to the customers, especially early customers. Now the types of customers, early customers, late customers, innovators, like that, that's again a different debate. Uh, I have uh, I have done a session on customer profiling. It's on YouTube on the Code9 channel. Go and watch that there. But uh, I, I, that's why I don't go into the details. But third stage is where you go and uh, start talking to customers and you maybe start getting some revenues start coming in. Now, you have sustainable revenues coming in. You have sustainable clients with you, and now it's time to grow and scale. So this is where you go and pitch to investors. You take your startup to multiple stakeholders. Again, you expand rapidly. You get more clients and customers, and you start growing or you start scaling. And last but not the least, once you have scaled enough, you maybe exit the company, you get acquired, or you keep on scaling, or maybe go go for an IPO. So those are also the pointers from the investment uh, investors' exit point of view. Will not get into what is an investor exit. Again, a topic for a different day. I I I am I'm so excited to talk about all these topics, but it's just the episode one day one. I'm sure we'll be able to cover all of this in the upcoming sessions, right? So six stages: idea stage, ideation, and uh, pre-idea stage is one. Then validation. You go and validate your idea. Then you develop product, prototype MVP. Then you start making money revenue. Then you scale and grow, and then you exit. Now, coming back to the question, which was, do you need to register your company to pitch, right? So if you're pitching at an idea stage, no. There's no company. There's no need to register anything. Do not get into the hassle of registering an entity. When I say entity, neither, neither a firm nor a company. When I say a firm, proprietorship firm, Partnership firm, private limited company, do not get into the hassle of registering any sort of entity. If you're pitching in a startup competition, if you're pitching at a competition which isn't done in college or school, if you're pitching uh, in general into any business plan competition, if you're pitching to investors or anybody, but you not have revenue or a product, you're in idea, idea stage, no need to register anything, right? Second, if you're into validation stage, no need to register. You do not need to register anything, right? You don't need to need to have an entity to validate or register your entire idea, right? Third is product development, right? No, registration not required. You don't need any entity while you are uh, building the product or an MVP. So, so basically for product engineers, the mechanical engineers, or designers, or coders, or techies, consider room build a product, register a domain, build a website, build a tech product, build a hardware product, but they need not have an entity. Now, I'm, I'm especially trying to highlight this point. A lot of times debate comes around this regarding IP. 
at who owns the ip or who holds the ip or what happens to the innovation on ip again we will have a dedicated ama around ip innovation we'll we'll be try and answer all these questions again a different topic too complex to talk about in the first episode we'll talk about it later right so no need to register that entity or the company at product development oblique prototyping oblique mvp stage now comes the revenue part which is stage number 4 you start making some sort of money now it can be yes or no if you are only into a stage where you are only getting revenue which is very little which is very minuscule uh or and you do not need to have a proper setup or you are pitching only to a few clients where, where from where some money will come and your and 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 the kind of job will be done right or you are a services company or a consultancy company or maybe even a product company you can always bill things on your own name right there's no need to have a registered entity at this stage max you can have an entity which is a firm and not a company right i hope this clarifies so no need to have so either you can bill in your own name or you need not have a company you can have a firm stage number 5 scale oblique growth this is where you rapidly start scaling right you go and uh, meet multiple clients you have money coming in you have investors getting on to you or you are you are pitching for investment this is a stage where you may or may not again have an entity or you may not sorry you again may or may not have an entity so this is a stage where you can either have an entity in terms of a firm or you can have a company right now if you're pitching to the investors and if you are a firm you can convert this firm into a company maybe overnight or once you have a commitment from investors so if it's a company which is a private limited limited, limited company investors can come directly on board it's a good idea you can do that right if not the firm can be converted into a company or rather technically a new company can be can be opened up and the firm firm, firm can be absorbed a, a chartered accountant or or a, or a finance professional can answer that question in a better way but the point is this is where you might need a company or a, or a firm or an entity last but not the least exit stage right ipo stage this is where you need to need to need to have a firm or a company most importantly a company a firm will not work here so this is very important to understand because a lot of times i see young entrepreneurs student entrepreneurs getting a private limited company registered registered and the problem is the moment you have a private limited limited company registered the the liabilities and the issues in the compliance associated associated with that company comes on top of you and if that company shuts down if the startup shuts down if that idea does not work you are in deep shit my friend you are in deep trouble because then shutting down a company will take another uh, another chunk of money and is troublesome so only so the bottom line is only and only register a company or an entity when you are extremely sure that things have started rolling out and everything is hunky dory and you have you have substantial revenues and money coming in right i think most of the growth stage companies also not having a company company for that matter they have firm right so that's i hope this answers the question right now most importantly if you are a freelancer if you are a consultant or if you are into a space you are providing services in general i think any which is you don't need a firm to firm to kind of get started on to your entrepreneurial journey you can simply bill in your own name and i think the job will be done so uh, uh, this is how the entire ecosystem especially in india works and i hope this will help or give you give, will help some of you watching this uh, and will help help in uh, kind of getting on to uh, your startup journey or your entrepreneurial journey uh, and it helps you in sort of a compliance point of view right okay so uh, i have already i think answered that but i'll i'll quickly summarize it once again how to get started you identify a problem you do a market research you build an mvp you validate it in launch and then you make money and then you get investor and you move ahead right so i think okay so that's all for all, like from the stru standard structures question uh, uh, standard structured questions point of view i'll now pick up a few questions that i've got on instagram and now i'll pick up also a few questions that i've got in my comments so if you allow and give me 
quick 10 seconds i will check my instagram for more questions okay so somebody asking about how to find investors for a startup i think it's a, again a different question any questions around investment and startups in, in investment specifically investment pitching fundraising we'll pick in the next episode or the later episode product launch product development we are not covering that today so sorry i'm not answering those questions the only reason why i want to want why i want to make these sessions or this entire ama structured is i want to give a lot of structured value to the people who are watching this because i will keep this episodes on youtube i'll not take them down uh, why i am doing this because uh, of course so that you can if, if, if you come back and watch this is a standard structure flow which is there and there's not not random information flowing around or floating around so that you do not get confused so it it will also help me in creating a series for uh, young entrepreneurs out there okay perfect so we are already past 50 minutes i have a few questions on facebook let me try and answer that as well so one of the questions is i want to start my own freelance company please tell me how can start and how to get fund so if you uh, it is by a gentleman called ankit so ankit if you want to start your freelance company uh, i don't think so you need to uh, get one get any kind of a registered thing done uh, you can start in your own name because you don't need a freelancing Uh, you don't need, don't need you don't need a company to do freelancing you can build a client in your own name and most importantly you don't need fund you are a services uh, company my friend uh, the first project you crack will give you money and of course if you are selling your services for and until unless you're not selling your services services for free or you're not selling it beyond the basic market rate i think you will make money on every every worth of service you sell so i don't think so uh, you will be you need money for starting a services company most importantly services companies are not uh, fundable you need to have a very different model if you are building a services company uh, if you want to kind of get investors money so yeah i hope that answers the question uh and somebody also asked how to improve my communication skills uh, i think crazy gamer that's a good question but again that's a question for a different time uh, how to improve my communication communication skills i'm not an expert on communication my friend i am an expert on startups pitching investment funding all those sectors uh, but uh, a, a very generic and a cliche advice practice talk to people do these kind of lives go on to stage talk uh, i think these are a few things that will help in in improving your communications try and communicate and talk as much as possible but again as i said it's a very standard general cliched advice uh, i am not an expert on communications uh, so you you should go and talk to somebody who is a communication expert uh and that's it that's all i think we what we wanted to do has been done it's under 60 minutes but more than 40 minutes so i think i hope uh, it was of some value to be, to all of you guys who are watching this uh, okay so let me quickly put in the closing remarks okay so all those who are watching and all those who, who tuned in to watch the first episode of ama with dnk uh, as i said why dnk i am dil nawaz khan and uh, excited about entrepreneurship and startups and very very passionate so that's the reason why i'm starting this series i hope that it is of worth and value to all of you people i hope uh, it i'm able to deliver you enough value and add some sort of uh, a positive contribution in your startup journey if you like this episode please give a shout out you can take us click on uh, you can take a, take a snapshot put it on instagram share on facebook linkedin other social media platforms give me a shout out on other social media platforms uh, and i really believe i hope to deliver a lot of value to all of you all of the guys who are watching this and i want to make sure you have a little more seamless start journey than any other entrepreneur out there uh, and the idea is to make it the and although i'm seeing it in the episode 1 but the idea the vision is to make it the biggest the best and the longest running startup series on the internet out there so i hope 
uh, let's see how many of you uh, you know be how many of, of you come and be a part of my journey but i really really want and hope that i'm able to give you a lot of value a lot of positive contribution uh, from my experience so thank you so much for your time all those who have tuned in till the late thank you so much for your time uh, thank you so much especially for tuning in on a saturday night but i think that's the best time to do something new and learn uh, that's all from my side signing off from first episode of ama with dnk thank you so much see you next saturday 9 pm give me a shout out on social media and hope to see you on next saturday thank you so much have a good night have a great weekend